Jared Polin, Fro Knows Photo. Dot com here with Rudy, who took took this really sweet picture that I grabbed out of the Flickr photo group. Rudy, how you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you. Good. Rudy is from New York City, where he... Uh, are you primarily a wedding photographer? Yes, I am. All right. And you've been doing it, you just said, for 40 years? Yeah, over 40 years. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this picture grabbed me. I, what, what grabbed me about this image in the Flickr photo group is obviously you captured multiple moments in one image you have the bride looking at i guess every uh, the bridal party standing outside and then you have this scene with the little kid and what you want to explain that to me well from what i i, I tried to uh, diagnose the image after i took it uh and i noticed it was the the little uh, ring bearer who just happened to kiss the bride's sister on the cheek just before he went into the church and she was watching everything going on and I was wondering what was going through her head at this moment. I had done a few other images before that and had gotten different reflections, but when I saw this one, this was the this was the one that I really liked. Yeah, it, well, it's really cool. It's a, it's a unique something different that you don't obviously see every day, but you were prepared to capture. Yeah, I look for I look for reflections. Um, I, I don't always get them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you never know what's gonna what's gonna appear in them. Um, this was a grab shot. Uh, I, I'd love to do grab shots that, that look creative and make you want to think and wonder what's going on in the image. And that this one just hit it on the mark. And it was great. And that, that's what's cool about reflections. It's like sometimes you don't notice the reflections. There's just like I, I was shooting a band the other day and the, the, the lead singer was sitting down on the, on the riser and I didn't realize that there was a, on the drum kit, the bass drum had a reflective head on it. So when I was looking at the image later in the computer, I saw the, the basically the lead singer was looking back at the drummer, but he was technically looking at me through the drum head, which was reflecting back into the camera. It was one of those shots that just happened. You know, it's yeah. not like I planned it. So what, what equipment are you using? Um, I, I have a Nikon D700. I love that camera. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I came from Canon. Believe it or not. So you switched. You went from <laughs> what I technically call the dark side, uh, me and Fro Vader, as I. Yeah. Yes. Um, I. You know. I, I had a studio and I closed it uh, about ten years ago, and I've been shooting for other studios and myself. And the one studio that I do shoot for loves Nikon, and they they said, "Look, you know, I want you to get with the program. Um, the strobes on the Nikon's are are really accurate. They're yep. they're made exactly for what I need in my wedding work. Uh, I was shooting big quantum strobes on my other camera and I wanted to go lighter and I wanted to be more accurate and now with the D700 I'm starting to shoot less strobe and more available light because mm-hmm. I can and what what lens is uh, what lens was this shot with I think this is my 24 to 70 all right one uh, how sweet is that lens that is amazing yeah do you, amazing do you have the 14 to 24 and 70 to 200 to go with it no I don't have the 14 to 24 I have a 14 millimeter rectilinear lens the 2.8 yeah, that's still a good. That's a cool lens. That's a cool, really cool lens. You, you just need the right, uh, the right atmosphere to shoot that. Yep. And then I have a seventy two hundred. Those are my primary lens and a fifty one four. I do. I call that the Hebrew Trinity, by the way. The Hebrew Trinity. The 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 chosen three lenses. Any combination of fourteen, either either the fourteen two eight, the fourteen to twenty four, twenty four to seventy, and seventy to two hundred. Either version one or version two. I've coined the Hebrew Trinity. Yeah. That's because they those three lenses, you could make it through just about any photo shoot with those three lenses. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a backup one of the older twenty four eighty fives as a backup. What's that? A two eight four. That's a two eight also. Is it yeah, straight? 284. I think it's yeah, a two eight to four. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a re- recommendation by somebody. He said, "Well, you go find one of these just in case. Mm-hmm. You know, you never know when a lens will go out on you on a job. And, you know, I have backup equipment, but you know, just to have another normal lens that I can work with." Just in case, it's got a macro, which is great. Yeah, they they seem not to do that too often in the pro lenses anymore. You don't. No. Do you, do you have a one hundred and five macro in the bag? No, I don't. It's a cool lens. I mean, it, it's one of those limiting lenses, a lens that you use on occasion, like ring shots or or just random yep. macro things at weddings. That's why I use this other macro. So when I'm working in the house, the first thing I do is I shoot a lot of macro images of the ring and the shoes and and detail shots with the macro and I use a, a video light with my images or I use a flashlight that I have uh, uh, tungsten, a tungsten based uh, LED mm-hmm. uh, which kind of 
you know, it works great for the macro work. Mm-hmm. That's good. Let's see. So, hmm. So you're shooting everything raw, which is great. Yep. Um, it's the only way to go. Yeah, uh, it is the only. Did you shoot JPEG at all? Ever? Never. Never. Yeah, that's the same thing I went through when I first got into digital SLRs, and uh, my first one was a D2H. Back in the day when Canon owned the market, I had the Nikon D2H, uh-huh. and, and I could not. And this was what 2003. And I was asking photographers, do you shoot RAW or do you shoot JPEG? And nobody could really give me a definitive reason why they stuck with JPEG only. Or nobody could really define RAW to me at the time. So I figured I might as well just shoot both to play it Uh safe. And then over the years, it's like, well, I don't need to do RAW plus JPEG anymore because those JPEGs are meaningless. Right. So... So in a, in well, a tip, they're, they're good to have the JPEGs, you know, because one of the studios I do shoot for, they they were color correcting, and I do a lot of color correcting before I turn my my images in, but the they're starting to print JPEGs now, which is really surprising, because this is a very high end, high quality studio, and they're finding that if you're shooting on the money for proofing, it's it's okay. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I feel I, the same way. I, I guess, I, but I, I, I color correct all my rows. I, I color correct every single image that I deem a keeper and the reason i do that is one the proofs look just as good as the final image and that helps you when when these brides sit down with their friends and they see a full book of color corrected proofs you you got you have to tweak the files anyway if you're if you're delivering digitals like i'm i'm delivering some you know discs with images on it and i I have to do it so i'm gonna color correct every image that's right i guess how, how many are they delivering how many pictures well, um, I just shot this this particular job you see here. I shot for another studio this weekend. And uh, I spoke to them today, and they wanted me to proof it for them. And I said I was color correcting. They asked me how many I shot, and I shot 1,044 images. And they said, could I narrow it down to about 850? 850. So I'm going to narrow it down to about 850. Wow, that, that's still a lot. I think, I mean, I, I tried to deliver 400, just about. Because yeah. I just feel there's... It, I don't know. I, I don't guarantee numbers, and I, the reason I don't guarantee numbers with anybody is I don't want to chase a number. I don't want to be shooting just to shoot. But that's you know, eleven hundred or four. Uh, you know, a little over a thousand seems to be normal these days for us shooting weddings. Yeah, and I remember the days of film. We used to shoot two fifty. Yeah. Yeah. Here's you know, go shoot six, seven rolls. And that was that was right. Right. There was plenty. Yeah. So that was plenty at the. So um, today, you know, with what we're shooting. It's just sometimes it's overkill, and sometimes now I'm just looking for for some unique images yeah, what, that make my job, in, you know, different. What uh, what's what's a lens that you don't have that you really want? What's a lens I don't have? Hmm. I you know, like I I said to you earlier, I wish I had you know one that would be twenty four to three hundred, uh, just for those moments when I need to to come in in the church or during a ceremony where I really don't have time to switch lenses. Um, where I can come in real tight and then come back. Uh, but they don't make anything that I really like. You know, that's why I'm looking around to see what's available, but there's really nothing that is as good as what I have. You want to know what, you, you want to know what the option is? Mm, what is that? So you put a, a D700 on a, you get one of those black rapid double straps. Right. You put a, a 24 to 70 on one, and you put a 70 to 200 on the other, and you're easily switching between one and the other, and that's the only way you're going to get those two weights. I know it's heavy, yeah. but... I know, I know. I was thinking of that, and you know, the numbering sequencing is an issue. I can renumber everything in RAW uh, once I finish my color corrections. And I, you know, some of the studios, I don't want them to get too confused. Well, as long as your times are right in both cameras, which you can set with the GP1, the Nikon GPS thing, or just sit there right. and hit OK at the same time. Right. And then you just go in the Lightroom and you and you uh, order by time taken. Right. And then and then you just renumber at that point. Or that's what yeah. I do. I renumber after I get the times right because when when I shoot with multiple people, we set our our uh, we set to the GPS before the wedding and then just put everything together at the end. Wow! And then renumber. Yeah, yeah I, I I put that thought through my head. It's just um, I concentrate so heavily on what my images look like. Sometimes I just don't want to switch cameras. I just want to just grab my one my D seven hundred and just keep shooting away. Oh, I agree with you. I'm I'm not the big fan of multiple bodies. I like switching lenses when I need to switch lenses. Um, there, there are times where you would like to have the option of both, but I like to pre-visualize as much as possible and anticipate and make sure I have what I think is the right lens for, uh, for what's going on. 
Right. All right, Rudy. Well, I, re I really like this image. I thank you very much for putting it into the Flickr photo group. Do you have any thank questions that you can think of? Uh, no, not at the moment. Uh, just thank you for uh, liking my image. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I I'm, I'm 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 happy that you you enjoy it. I hope everybody else enjoys it. Yeah, I think I think it gives people another way to look at things and and see that you can just there's multiple images going on in one frame and reflections are a very can be a very uh, cool thing if you capture it properly. Yeah, one of the photographers from Australia, I know Jerry Cajonis, took a couple of classes with him and uh, he's big on reflections. And now I just look and look even on a rainy day. If I get the bride and groom out on a rainy day, if there's a puddle or a pond or anywhere I can find, look for one, I, I look to see what I can get. Yep, it definitely creates some unique images. Yep. All right, Rudy, thank you again. I will try to get this up. Not sure when it's going up, but it will be up at some point. Okay, great. All Let right. Okay. All right, Jared you, Poland, Fro knows photo. Dot com reminding you all to put those photos in the Flickr photo group because next week I may be calling you. All right, see ya.